take the tire off first. If I was to put an extension on this, it would struggle a little bit. It needs a lot of torque, so I'll go straight to the socket. Just gotta angle it in there right for it to get in there. So. Off. We're also changing the brake pads on these too. I know there's several of these videos on YouTube, but the main reason why I want to do one is because this has a ratcheting locking nut style locking nut and um, I had uh, several friends call me and ask me like how do I even torque these down so I usually have to run over there because they don't quite get the process that I'm telling them they get it but they didn't want to do it so well two of them did one went ahead and did it on his own but he came back and we took it apart again to make sure he did it right so anyway this is a video on how to do that I'm going to take these brake pins out. This is a new set I have here in case I need them. Might as well put them in anyway. I'm just going to punch. You guys, have, there's several videos on how to do this, so. Just get it at the very bottom. get it all the way out do the bottom one and then you can come back and punch that top one out this doesn't take a whole lot of tapping you don't have to tap it too hard bottom when a sandwich is together you get it at the bottom it's easier to get both both sides at once instead of just punching through the rubber actually that one still looks good that one still looks good too they both still look new all right what I do to this is I tap it a little bit over here. Some people have problems with these, others don't. It wants to come out. This rotor's coming off, so it doesn't matter if you ping it. get it out for the far enough to kind of stick the screwdriver in there and then on the back side which you can't see and I can't move the camera over here there's a spot once you pull it out enough you can stick between the piston on the brake caliper and the rotor itself like I said this rotor is no good so you can push that in a little bit just a little bit 
<laughs> All those shims. Now what I like to use this hook. Instead of just sticking it up there, I kind of turn it around like this. just like that and then stick it up here on the coil if I can get it in there without off to the side out of the way so as you can see it was about ready but the main thing is the other rotor went bad and so we're changing both out the hub looks a little loose too. So now we got that out of the way. T25. I like to go crisscross. Everyone does it differently. Like you're taking a tire off. Make sure it's locked in the unlock, which it is. Otherwise it wouldn't spin so easily. Actually, it wouldn't spin at all because the other tire's on the ground. But then once you get that, it comes right off. Stick that right over here. Yeah, there's a lot of grease in there, which is a good thing. So you'll look for the pin. But first, there's a ring. There's a snap ring in here. I'm sure you all know about. Got to locate the end of it. There it is right there. Hold it so it doesn't spin on you. Pop it out. All right, so I went and grabbed the, I didn't have the hook pick. This one seems to work the best for me, so. See if we can get it in there. Look at that. <laughs> that was pretty easy. I just used a little hook one. Everyone else does it different. A few minutes ago I was trying these two and the straight one. So the hook one always seems to work. I just didn't know where it was. So I had to take a few minutes to go find it. So now that I got that out. Inside here there's a snap ring, we all know that. Like I said, we're, we know how to do this most of the time. Everyone's already looked at other videos and I might be coming along late in the game. Like I said, I had a channel before and I got rid of it and started all over. So updating the videos because I got better cameras and all that other crap. So. Now I'll get the snack ring pliers, locate the end. I can't see it. There's so much grease in here. We bought this truck used, but apparently Ford did all the work, so that's a good thing. It means I don't have to mess with anybody else's screw-ups and everything should be there. It is. Everything should be good to go. Again, I grab the hook just so I can grab it right away. Time to get a new set of snap ring pliers. Try this straight one. Got some tools in my way here. So I was able to get it in there somewhat and off to the side. So what I'm going to do now is just pry it a little bit. Put my rag over it so it doesn't pop out and hit me in the face or something crazy. So that's the snap ring that goes right on the ridges there. All right. So then take this. Out. Everything looks good. These actually look new, so I don't know if I must have had this. Recently. 
done it somehow. The outside's done anyway. Okay, look on the inside, that's when you get this. What I like to do is just take it out with this. Just ratchet it in there only so much, so. But it's just easier to get it off. And get it loose, completely loose. That's it. That's how it looks. There, but the bearing looks good in here. The bearing seal looks good. So flip it back over. That bearing looks really good. Side bearing. This is the whole reason why I'm making the video. This is not the uh, locking ring and then the, the washer plate and then another locking ring. This is all one that ratchets it all on there. And you gotta do it a certain way. It's 70 foot pounds tighten, back off 90 degrees, which is a quarter of a turn, and then 20 foot pounds. So, a little bit of a process. It's pretty easy once you've done it a bunch of times. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that and I'm going to press each one of these lug nut studs out, which they're still good. So I'm going to press them out and I'll show you how I'm going to do that and then install it all on the new one. So I got it in the press, right, but I'm going to zoom in to where you can watch it work. This is the small 12 ton shop press from Harbor Freight. Probably should have got it down. before starting the video. <laughs> this is handy to have. I do a lot of wheel bearings, uh, a lot of these lug nut changes on stuff like this, on the ones that I don't have to do while it's on the vehicle anyway, but do a lot of other small stuff like uh, rubber bushings, um, bearings, pulley bearings, you name it. It's done it. So what we want to do, just go slow. Usually I spray it, but I really don't need to. So there's one. And these are good to use again. These are actually really good, in really good condition. So you guys can see that. So then I go up just a little bit. and then go down again. I really need to get something down. So I apologize for the limited workspace, the light and all that. I got a dirty shop. So this is a Duralast rotor. And yes, I do need to clean my shop kind of loud because I got my door open and Scottsdale traffic is a pain in the ass. So there's the new rotor. It's a uh, Duralast from AutoZone. It's where my brother likes to go. This is his truck. So, you know, can't really say a whole lot about that. So we're going to clean this hub up, but first, you stick it on here. Line it up with the holes.
grab all the studs. And what I like to do to get it started is set it on the ground and tap on it with my punch and my sledge. So I'm going to do that. Moving the camera so y'all can see. I actually use this big steel bolt. It used to be a bolt, but get started this way. Everyone does it differently. I don't like to use a uh, air hammer for my own personal reasons. I like to get started that way. Oh boy. And once it's on, just put it back on the table, put it over. Like I say, everybody does it differently. That's a larger nut. Get it on there. Man, I really apologize for the lighting, guys. Let me see if I can go down with the... Uh it's obviously a little better. Guess I didn't grab my socket. Hold it right up on there. Didn't take a whole lot. Like I said, everybody does it differently. So we'll laugh, do whatever, say whatever about it. But no, I've been doing it this way for years, so never had any failures, never had any issues. Once you get to you know something that works, you kind of stick to it. Alright, so got the hub out here. Put some high temp grease on that and inside the hub. So now I'm going to grab the back of it so not to kind of limit my greasiness on it. The bearing's still in place. Slide it all the way back. Put your hand up here by the brake caliper holder or the uh, the hub knuckle and the brake bracket hold it in place and take your other bearing make sure it's clean kind of stick it in place wiggle back and forth okay there we 
we go. Kick a little bit more grease. That's STP high temp bearing grease. Okay, now we're gonna stick your your ratcheting locking nut and it's got to go on there's a notch in it it's got to go up top up here along here so you got to rotate it until you find that notch that's just to take it out see the notch is up top there so I'm going to want to put it on just like this as good as you can. It's going to be greasy. Like this. And this is the only part that I basically wanted to show on here. I could have cut through all that stuff, but I thought, why not go ahead and show you. Okay, now it's going on. You can kind of hear it ratcheting. hard to hold it in place because it's so, so greasy. By now I've gotten it close up there enough to where the hub's going to stay in place. Make sure there's no play. You want to pick it up. You don't want to wobble it back and forth. I push the hub from the bottom as I'm going. And it's tight. There's no play. So what we're going to do now, this is the important part. This is the whole reason why I'm doing the video. Let me grab my torque wrench. So you're gonna go 70 foot pounds. So I'm going to get this to 70 foot-pounds. I might be in the way a little bit, so, of the camera. It's going to ratchet as you're turning it. You're ratcheting. Now you're waiting for your clip. All right, right there is the clip. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the torque wrench, but you want to get 90 degree turn, which is a quarter of a turn. So I'm going to get right here, quarter of a turn backwards, quarter of a turn. And then I'm going to go to 20 foot pounds. Some people say it ends up being about 30 foot pounds total, but I don't trust that. I've never wanted to do it that way. So I went a quarter turn backwards. Now I'm going to set it for 20 foot pounds and tighten. supposed to rotate it too as you're doing that but it's very hard to do so I rotate it after 
Some side might say that's a little too tight. Got to rotate it a few times. And then check it. I've always done it this way. Never had any issues. Right there. So, and there's no play, no nothing. Now, there's another thing I do want to show that I'm going to go ahead and show you. But I may be stopping it because i got to mess with these nangs, snap rings again. So, but what goes in next, you put this guy back in there. Make sure the entire thing fits. Slide it in. Now, in the process of putting the snap ring back on, some people end up pushing the axle itself back in and then they don't have enough room to put the snap ring on because it makes it appear like this whole thing's loose, like there's something wrong with it. And there's a real easy trick to that. Take your screwdriver, you're gonna look on the inside towards the back where the axle goes in, put it in between there and watch this. See it push back out? See it moving? Now I know the U-joints on the inside of the axle are good. So that's not why it's moving. It's just got a little bit of play in it. The hub uh, knuckle spindle itself stays stationary while the four-wheel drive one slides through it and rotates so that when you lock it, your wheel turns. So I've had people contact me, man, I, I don't know what I did, but I just can't seem to get that the locking nut on there. It's real simple, I always tell them. I used to have to show them because they just don't get it. But you want to stick your screwdriver in the back and I get a picture of it and just pull it forward. And now I have enough room to put my... Alright, so to get the snap ring on there, I wasn't able to get it completely on with these. They're just not the best snap ring pliers. I have another set, can't find them. They're probably in the work truck, so what I did is I got it on there pretty much all the way on. I thought, okay, I'm going to let it sit for a minute. I took a 33 millimeter uh, axle nut socket, stuck it over it, and tapped it once with a hammer, and put that snap ring right into place. So it didn't take very long, but nonetheless, now the next one is the outer ring. So you want to feed one side in, feed the rest of it in just like that. Take a smaller screwdriver. I got my smaller snap-on screwdriver here and just slowly feed it around in the spot into place. And there you go. So now I'm going to stick this on there. You can't get this wrong. It's got three prongs. Pop it into place. Let me go grab my grab my drill. I use a small one that's ratcheting. I put it on about four. Just a regular Black & Decker drill, small one I use for my speaker work. Again, like I said, I like to go cross pattern, like you're putting on the lug nuts on a tire. It really doesn't have a whole lot of torque on that. It's at setting number four. I'm going to go back through and torque them with the... Uh, inch pound torque wrench. Honestly you don't even really need that. You just need to get them hand tight. So that's it. Now I'm gonna put the brake on, put the caliper back on, the brake pads I meant, and the caliper, put the rim back on and we're done. So like, share, subscribe.